What would we see if JWST pointed at Earth? This is something that will never, ever happen. JWST is an infrared telescope, and even though it's literally a million miles away from Earth, our planet would be incredibly bright for the biggest space telescope out there. Essentially, our toasty planet would emit so much infrared light that it would quickly burn out JWST's detectors. Even worse is that because of the way the telescope orbits, if it turns to look at the Earth, it will also be looking directly at the Sun, which is orders of magnitude brighter, and would instantly destroy the telescope's detectors by overwhelming them with powerful infrared radiation. In this video, let's ignore these harsh facts for a moment and discuss what the telescope would look if it could safely look at the Earth, what sort of image it might produce, and whether it could detect intelligent life on the planet. So, we know JWST can't ever look at the Earth for fear of blinding itself, but we'll pretend that we can point JWST in the direction of the Earth, and it would work as intended, without burning out all of its sensors. The reality is, even with this assumption, any image it could take probably wouldn't be that good at all. There is something even better it could do though, and we'll get to that a bit later. First, we need to keep in mind that JWST doesn't see light like we do, but instead, it's basically a heat camera looking at the universe. It's sensitive to infrared light, not the visible colors of light that we can see with our eyes. Infrared light is less energetic than visible light, and it has a longer wavelength. And this means that it produces slightly blurrier images in general than visible light. You need bigger mirrors to get good resolution for infrared images. This is why the Hubble Space Telescope and JWST actually produce images that are of similar resolution despite JWST having a much bigger mirror. But Hubble sees mostly visible light, compared to JWST's entirely infrared detectors. The good news is that JWST is the biggest mirror we've ever put in space. The bad news is that JWST is really far away, and Earth is relatively small. JWST doesn't orbit the Earth, but instead is at a place in space about 1.5 million kilometers away that we call Lagrange Point 2, or L2 for short. Again, compare this to Hubble, which does orbit the Earth at an altitude of 450 kilometers or so, give or take 50 kilometers, say. All this means that JWST would of course be able to see the Earth, but the detail wouldn't be as good as I hoped. After a rough calculation, I get that JWST would be able to resolve to about 500 meters on the Earth's surface. Don't get me wrong, this is pretty amazing for a telescope that is so far away, but really it means that it could only detect things larger than something like a sports stadium. By that, I also don't even mean that it could see details in them, but it could say there is something different over there, because one pixel looks a different color. Anything smaller than that, it just wouldn't detect. There are also a few other things that limit how JWST could view the Earth. The main one is speed. JWST is designed to image some of the most distant objects in the universe, and from our point of view, they don't tend to move very much at all. It can also track objects that are closer by, with Mars and a few asteroids being pretty much the fastest orbiting things that it can detect. Here, we'd have to take into account both the spinning of the Earth and the motion of JWST's orbit around L2. As a result of this, exposures of the planet would be limited to just a second or a few seconds before the whole image gets blurry. In that time, we may be able to resolve some city lights for the biggest cities, but in just one second, I'm not even sure we could get that. If we could take longer exposures, then we absolutely could, eventually. But the image would be really blurry and way too bright to make out anything at all anyway. This is all after we've already ignored the fact that the Earth is so bright, it would probably just blur out the detectors. And really, we'd just be seeing a completely saturated white or black image. I'm not sure what JWST does when it breaks like that. And also ignoring atmospheric effects of the Earth's atmosphere, which would also distort the image. There's a really cool article by XKCD that does this same thought experiment but for the Hubble Space Telescope. And it has some really cool images to show what Hubble would see looking at the Earth. And they've also made that into a video. It runs into similar problems, but I will link this all in the description if you want to have a look for yourself. Something I've heard said a lot is that because JWST is at L2, which is sort of on the same line as the Sun and Earth, like this, the JWST could only ever image the night side of Earth. 
Since JWST is an infrared telescope, this wouldn't really be a problem. And in fact, it might even be a bonus and make imaging easier because the planet itself wouldn't be so bright. But it's also not quite accurate. While L2 is a single point in space, JWST isn't actually at that exact point. In reality, it's on an enormous orbit around that point. Check out a video in the description for more on that if you like. What it means though, is that the telescope would see mostly the night side, but also with a crescent of the day side. The Earth also wouldn't quite totally eclipse the sun from JWST's point of view. L2 is four times the Earth-Moon distance, so it's really far away. But the Earth is also almost four times the size of the Moon. So from JWST, the Earth would look about the same size that the Moon does from Earth. Since the Sun is 93 million miles from Earth, adding another million to get to L2 doesn't really change the apparent size of the Sun. This all means that it would be close, but the Sun would look a little bit larger than the Earth does, and so the Earth wouldn't be able to totally cover the Sun, if it lined up at all, which I actually don't think it ever would. But this is all just a cool thing to think about anyway, I'm not sure it really affects what we're talking about in this video. In reality, there are many telescopes that are better at imaging the Earth than JWST would be. It's not designed to look at this planet. These other telescopes are a lot smaller than JWST, but they're a lot closer, and they are designed for looking down at the planet, rather than looking out into the universe at the most distant objects possible. Some of these Earth observation telescopes we know about and release the images, while many more are military and surveillance satellites that we don't explicitly know about, but we kind of know they exist. The US government once produced a Hubble-grade mirror, designed for looking downwards, and actually just gave it to NASA, on the proviso that they didn't ask any questions about where it came from. If you want to hear more about that story, and the telescope it has become, I will leave a link up here and in the description, so you can check that out as well if you'd like. While JWST can image other planets, for example it's imaged the solar system planets from Mars to Neptune, its images actually aren't the coolest thing that it does for planets, and it's not how JWST is looking for planets that could host life. I mean, this is what a planet looks like orbiting another star from JWST's point of view. Impressive to image something so small and far away, but we can make out literally no detail on this planet, and the image isn't winning any awards for aesthetics. So what does it do that's better? That would be something called spectra, the breaking down of light into individual wavelengths. Light we receive from objects in space isn't made up of an equal amount of all the possible wavelengths or colours of light. That would just make everything white light. And the amount of each wavelength in that light tells us a lot about the object it came from. In the case of planets, we're actually talking about something called a transmission spectrum. This tells us a lot about a planet and specifically its atmosphere. But what is it? It's something we can only do for exoplanets we spot around other stars that pass in front of the star from our point of view not any that might appear disk on from Earth. As the planet passes between its star and us, the light from the star passes through the atmosphere of the planet. This sort of filters the light that makes it to our telescope. The elements in any atmosphere that that planet has each absorb light at only very specific wavelengths, and this leaves a sort of fingerprint that tells us what the atmosphere is made of. Other wavelengths make it through unabsorbed, and that's what we get in our telescope. For example, this is what the transmission spectrum of the Earth would look like to JWST. Each spike in this line tells us about an element or a molecule that is present in our atmosphere. Something that is slightly confusing here is that each spike tells us the wavelengths of light that were absorbed more, so there was actually less of that wavelength detected. Sometimes, and I think helpfully, these spectra plots might be flipped to make them a bit more intuitive, and then every dip tells us about an element instead of each spike. For this Earth spectra, we have spikes that tell us about the elements we know are in the atmosphere, like oxygen, water in the form of water vapour, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, O3, nitrous oxide, and so on. I should say that we need to remember this is infrared wavelengths of light too, so we don't learn about elements that absorb other wavelengths of light. For example, Earth's atmosphere is largely made of nitrogen, but that actually absorbs ultraviolet light so JWST wouldn't tell us anything about the presence of nitrogen, and that's why you can't see it in this spectrum. So, next time you're wondering what Earth would look like to JWST, don't picture some fancy image of the Earth, maybe in black and red, of infrared light, but actually picture this line on a plot. That is what Earth would look like to the telescope. 
This specific plot I'm showing is actually what Webb would see if Earth was about 40 light years away, which is a reasonable distance for exoplanets it might actually study. Knowing what it would see for Earth will help us recognize if we spot another planet with similar conditions. And since Earth is the only known planet to host life, these are the sorts of conditions we would be looking for to better understand our place in the universe and whether we're really all alone. Leave me any questions in the comments below and subscribe if you made it this far in the video and enjoyed it. It really helps me out and it's free for you. So win-win. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.